A popular gun in law enforcement in the US, the Mossberg 590A1 is a beautiful budget gun. And today we're going to be talking about some of the ammo recommendations and tips and tricks for this gun, which I believe is one of the strongest budget guns in Tarkov right now. So over the past couple days, I've had been a laugh with the Mossberg 590. This gun paired with the right ammo can be a devastating combo. I've really been having a lot of fun doing quick peeks and also pushing some close engagements. And the part about this gun is how effective it can be for how cheap the gun actually is. Paired with the right ammo, this thing can be devastating and can help you make an incredible amount of money. We got him. But how does this shotgun stack up versus the other shotguns? I think the first thing you need to know about this shotgun is unfortunately it's a pump action shotgun. So the action is quite slow compared to that of the MP153. However, compared to the other shotguns here like the MP133, we're going to be noticing that the MP133 is actually a little bit cheaper here by 7,000 rubles. However, if we look at the stats side by side, not only is it coming with a smaller magazine here, 6 first 8, but the ergonomics are worse and the MOA is also worse. And the MOA is really important, especially if you're not using slugs like AP20. If you're using stuff like Buckshot and Flechette, the MOA is an incredibly important stat. So this gun actually also comes with a few other things here, but let's check out the spread of Magnum Buckshot. One of the best Buckshot rounds you can get your hands on. So we shoot it up against the wall here from roughly about 10 meters away, and this is with the Mossberg 590. Now we're going to be using the Remington M870, which is also a, a more accurate with a lower MOA shotgun hit. However, the Remington is also quite expensive, but it usually comes with around a four round mag. Now I think there's a few differences here between these shotguns other than MOA, obviously ergo as well. But as you can see from the iron sides, the small rib at the front compared to the nice rear iron on the Mossberg 590 is also something nice as well that you can think about when making a decision here. As we look at the spread up against the wall with the Mossberg 590 actually being quite tight here, you can definitely tell that when we switch over to the Remington, it's slightly tighter here with the spread being just a little bit better. But when we look over at the MP153, uh, 133 however, sorry, you're going to be noticing it's quite wide. So we're doing the same shots here, this time starting off with the MP133 here at around about 25 to 30 meters. And we're going to be doing the same distance here while crouched just to see what the spread would look like up against the wall here. So we're going to do the Mossberg in the middle and finally the Remington M870. Obviously, you don't really want to be ideally engaging in distances like this, but the tighter the spread, especially when it's focused around the head region, you're going to be noticing if that was someone was up against here, some of it would actually be hitting their arms and or missing. So this is significant as well. I also want to stress to you guys that when you can see the, the spread here, obviously on the left hand side here is the M133 and then the Mossberg. You're going to be noticing that you don't really want to be running flechette or magnum buckshot or anything with multiple projectiles at that sort of distance anyway, especially without a choke. That'd be interesting to see if they plan on adding a choke for the Mossberg. That would be incredible and really, really strong in my opinion and would push it ahead of these. But a lot of people are going to be asking in the comment section and below, why would you choose the Mossberg over the MP153? I think the MP153 is probably the best shotgun in the game right now other than the Saiga. But the interesting thing about this shotgun, however, is you can only buy it from Jaeger level 2. And the reason that I'm ragging on about the Mossberg is it's perfectly stock. Whereas the MP153 really needs an extended mag, whether it be 7 rounds or 8 rounds. And unfortunately, they're either not sold on the flea market or you need high level Jaeger. Another way you can do it is copying the MP153 off the flea market with an 8 rounder if someone happens to sell one from a scav run. When it comes to ammo choice here, however, there's only one choice in my opinion, and that is the AP20 slug. These 12 gauge monsters are some of the best accurate slugs that you can get in Escape from Tarkov right now, and we'll get into these a little bit later. But if you have Jaeger at level 4, which I know is a bit of a nightmare with some of his tasks, you can actually get some really incredible results. And it's also incredibly cheap here, being able to purchase 80 every hour for 196 rubles. However, if you don't have Jaeger on max, there's a few other different options that you have. You can buy AP20 off the flea market here for roughly about 800 rubles. And the reason that this is still within the reason of budget 
is that you don't really need that many. You can fill up your Mossberg with a couple shots, have a couple in your pockets and a stack within your secure container. So if you die, it doesn't hurt so badly. But this ammo is actually incredible. This is all I've been using with all of the shotguns for the past week and I've been having some seriously good results. As we look at the other options, however, at level three get Ray, uh, Jaeger here, we have Flechette. Now Flechette shoots some darts here and the Flechette is actually pretty devastating up against armor. But at level two Jaeger, we have another option here being Magnum Buckshot. The Magnum Buckshot is a little bit cheaper, but like I was saying, that spread can be quite bad at certain ranges. So when running Magnum Buckshot, I would also consider CQB, trying to be up close and personal. It doesn't really give you an option to engage someone from 50 meters plus with any sort of accuracy. However, the best thing about Magnum Buckshot is when it's paired with something that can put rounds down range. Another option for you guys, if you have the workbench level three, but you don't have Jaeger on max, if you purchase a Gunpowder Hawk or and also two hard drives, you can craft AP20 at the workbench. Now this takes about two hours and 30 minutes or so, and it gives you roughly about 120 rounds here. Now this is significant because this allows you to, you know, either sell this for a little bit of extra money or use them. And it roughly works out to be about 500 rubles per round, which is actually cheaper than you saw at the 800 to purchase. And it can be even cheaper if you go through the process of making the red gunpowder yourself and or finding it in raid. There's a few other different options here. However, you don't have to use AP20 guys, but let's have a quick look at the ammo chart. So as we have a look at the ammo chart, I'm going to mark some here with green tick on the left hand side being Magnum Buckshot, Sabot, Flechette, 12 gauge with a 50 BMG bullet and the AP20. Guys, these are probably the best ones to be using at this stage in the game. The reason that I would say these is because you need rounds with 90 plus flesh damage to one shot, one shot the thorax. And that's really why I've been raving on about AP20. Not only does it have 37 pen, but it has 136 flesh, which means even when it pens armor, it has plenty of damage to take a target down. So let's have a look at what I would call close to a hundred meter shot here with AP20 up against the wall. As you can see there, the drop isn't actually that bad. And we're also going to be testing the MOA of the MP13153 versus the 590 Mossy. And we're going to be noticing here that obviously there's a fair bit more recoil on the action here. But when we actually go up against the fence and have a look at the difference between the two spreads, we can see some interesting results here. I think the interesting thing between these is you're not really doing engagements like this, so that small minimal difference here in MOA doesn't really make a difference. But when you're running AP20 in your shotgun, it actually increases the, uh, the MOA here and makes it a lot tighter by adding 125% extra accuracy when using these slugs. So it means even though this is a shotgun, look how tight that grouping is at such an incredible distance, making sniping with the shotgun actually an incredible strat here. So what I would need you guys to realize at home is that if you really want a gun that can bring down targets with an incredible amount of stopping power, the Mossberg 590 with AP20 in it, even bog stock standard can be one of the most powerful bang for buck budget guns in Escape from Tarkov right now. Here's a few clips of me using the Saiga 12, which I'm actually going to make a video about soon. But this is the Saiga 12 with AP20 in a drum mag. Obviously a completely different league of its own, but I've been having incredible fun with this guys at home. The real truth is ever since the buff, the shotgun rounds have felt incredible. I don't know what you guys are thinking at home, but I've been having an absolute blast with the shotgun rounds. This is probably one of my favorite calibers and some of these changes were much needed and with the changes to the thorax hp have really set them in stone in the meta for me making the shotguns and also the large rounds like ps12b incredibly viable because of the issues that come with the caliber behind it so what do you guys think at home do you think the mp153 is the best shotgun or do you think the mossberg 590 is a, an actually great competitor if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for future content. I'm going to be working on some ammo testing for these shotgun rounds. So if you guys want a more in-depth look of any of these rounds and what they do and what they can achieve, make sure to swing by and make sure you watch the videos in future. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the next one.